Hey fun fans, Nick Jr. back here from First in Michigan and I am here at the First in Michigan Macomb Community College event in week five here. And today I am here with Cooper, Izzy and Max from Team 3175 Night Vision who is currently ranked number three at the end of Friday. We're gonna be talking about their robot, all this and more coming up on Behind the Bumpers. Your destination for first content, updates and gaming. Welcome, Welcome to the fun. First Updates Now is supported by Kettering University. Kettering University hosts three co-op employment fairs each year for incoming and current students. Participating in the co-op employment process at Kettering is a great way to begin turning robotics experience into a professional career to earn money towards graduating debt-free. If you are a senior, it's not too late to apply at kettering.edu slash apply. Cooper, so I'm going to hand it off to you. Let's go ahead and take a look at your fantastic robot that you guys got going this year. Yeah, thanks. Uh, so I'm going to start talking about the intake. Um, so the intake is uh, full width. It's actuated by a non-parallel four bar with pneumatics. Um, and one of the things we were focusing on with our pneumatics was making sure that they stay uh, closed when the intake is actuated. So right now the intake is stowed and the cylinders are um, extended. So that way they don't bend when the intake gets hit when it's actuated. Uh, so we just use a row of compliant wheels. We have two powered rollers. Um, we didn't find a need for three. The geometry works just fine with the two. Um, but we can show the actuation and uh, intaking. Yeah, so that's, our, that's the intake. Um, we have three separate plates. And originally, we had a lot of um, stiffness issues. Uh, when this axle here, the standoff, became misaligned, we would lose this long belt that goes to the motor. Um, and we wanted to keep that belt long because it makes sure that the motor stays within frame perimeter when the intake is extended. So that and the virtual four bar, which provides a lot of compliance and impacts, was really what we wanted to make sure the intake didn't break. Um, so that's, that's pretty much the intake. We added this standoff here to fix those stiffness issues. It's a big piece of one by one and some tab and slot Lexan. So this is super stiff in the direction of the displacement that we were having problems with. And that really fixed all of that belt throwing, uh, all of those belt throwing issues. I think Max is gonna talk about the feeder and shooter now. So for the feeder, we just have a few mechanum wheels and some tube that just moves the ball through. So when this twists, it just separates the balls via this divider right here and then these mechanums. And the balls just kind of naturally find their place anyway. So we haven't had that many issues, but just in case, we have this divider and those mechanums. Just rotates the ball into the shooter wheels, which I will talk about next. The, so for the shooter, we just have six inch, I believe they're high grips, uh, driven by two Falcons, I believe on a one and a half to one ratio. Then that also goes on a four to one ratio, I believe four to one, to our rollers at the back that reduce backspin. So when we were first testing our shooter, we did not have the rollers, but or the back roller, but we added it because we found that it reduced our backspin, which in turn reduced the amount of bounce out that we had. So that was a really good add-on. All right, thanks uh, Cooper and Max for that. We're gonna hand it over to Izzy now, who's gonna talk a little bit about their path planning and their super smooth autonomous that we've seen here now at Rochester and the Macomb Community College event. All right, so we have an SDS Mark III swerve drive and that has made it a lot easier for us to have complex autos that can work well with our partners and score as many points as possible. So we use Path Planner, which is a community developed um, Auton planner. And we have eight auto modes that start in different places, some at the fender, some along the, uh, within the tarmac. And we have two, three, and four ball options. And we have a four ball on the right side tarmac and the left side tarmac so that we can be, we can work with our partners as well as possible. Those haven't been run on the field yet successfully, but they're a work in progress. Um, awesome, thank you. And obviously, you know, like you said, it's a work in progress, but you guys have had a great Rochester event. You're having another great one here at Macomb. I expect to see you guys in the SEMS and finals tomorrow. So continue to, and I cannot wait to see you guys at the Michigan State Championship as well. So again, thank you, Cooper, Izzy, and Max for joining me today. Nick Jr. from the First in Michigan Macomb Community College event, signing off. Thanks to Kettering University for their support of this video.
Kettering University hosts three co-op employment fairs each year for incoming and current students. Participating in the co-op employment process at Kettering is a great way to begin turning robotics experience into a professional career to earn money towards graduating debt-free. If you are a senior, it's not too late to apply at kettering.edu slash apply. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now and check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.